My name is Kathy Rose. Uh, I am a groomer. I've been grooming for uh, almost 30 years, a uh, competitive groomer on Groom Team USA for four consecutive teams, gold medalist. Um, but my daily life is grooming dogs. I have a salon in Florida, uh, and I groom dogs. My hands are in fur every day. And so these seminars, the series that we're doing this weekend, um, this obviously is not a mutt, but we're not doing a traditional cocker spaniel trim. Um, most of the dogs that we'll be demonstrating on, and especially this, this is Sierra, by the way. She's a two and a half year old uh, cocker spaniel, and she's lovely. She's got a very nice temperament, and this might be the average uh, dog that walks into our salon where the owners don't want the long flowing coat. They want something um, tidier and easier to maintain. Uh, you know how the skirts are always getting matted, the legs get into dragging everything in the house. So we'll put a nice short sporty trim on the dog. Uh, many people call it a suburban. Uh, and then we'll add a few little items at the end to pizzazz it up a little bit. Um, when your first uh, dog first walks in your salon, it's always important to give it a good evaluation. Now, I just met Sierra, so that's what I've been doing is checking her over, um, checking her confirmation, feeling for her top line, checking her over for any injuries or uh, any problems that could arise. I want to evaluate and make sure that there's no skin problems or irritations or issues. Uh, I've already talked with the owner of the dog and found out that she has no health problems, and so we're good to go. Um, the owner did advise me that she's a little bit um, frightened with the clipper around her face. So this is good to know, and these are questions that you always want to ask when a client first comes into your salon. Uh, for instance, uh, has your dog ever had razor irritation from previous groomers? Um, this is important to know because it can give you a heads up on how close of a blade you want to use when you're going to be um, doing the face area or even on the body, the throat, the underwear area. Uh, so it's important to find that out. Has Sierra ever had any irritated skin issues? Okay, so we don't want to go too close then. On her belly. On her belly, okay. So it's important to know that. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll start with our prep work. I like to <laughs> set a pattern for myself and start um, and use the same process every time. So usually in my salon, it's brush. Uh, we, uh, once the dogs are prepped for you, bathed and brushed, um, we start with the clipper work. And I always like to start with the pads. And working around motion, you want to save. Saving motion saves time. So I have to kind of work around so I don't block your view. So I might do it a little bit different than usual. Get our pads clipped. I like to use a clipper on a 15 or a 30 and just get the excess hair out of the pads, being careful how you're lifting the feet. You can just take three little scoops. You don't need to make them excessively clean. You just want to get the excess hair out so that they don't uh, mat. There actually should be a little bit of hair left in the pad for protection. Then I'm going to want to change my clipper over to a 10 blade to do the underwear area. And you always want to be careful when you're doing the underwear area how you're lifting the legs and the knees. And you make sure that the knees are in good condition. There's no evidence of a slip patella. And I just like to lightly do the underwear as well. So we've got our clipper work done. Get around the back. I choose to use my scissor around the rectum because I think um, sometimes the clipper just takes it too close. So we'll go back to that later. Um, now I'm gonna continue on with my blade work. And she's got, we're making her in a pet trim, and she's got these lovely eyelashes. So I wanna keep the eyelashes. Um, but let's see if we can get her little face cleaned up make a little V in the stop area, which will help the expression and to open up her eyes. Good girl. Good girl. Now you can use your thumb to move the eyelash 
out of the way. And one method of skimming the throat area, you can actually take your clipper and hold it backwards. And this will help blend the coat into the neck area without making it too short. Good girl. Good girl. Always keep a good handle on them and you can feel when they're getting a little bit nervous and catch them before they start to move. So by holding her and holding her muzzle, I can keep her tongue in her mouth and away from the clipper. We don't want her injuring her, her tongue by licking the clipper blade. Now on the lips, you have to be careful, especially with the cockers, with the little nubs, but it's important to get in the flues because that's where all the food collects and it gets stinky and it can cause some irritations. And she does want to lick this, so we're not going to go real close here. It's always important, too, to check your blade um, to make sure it's not getting hot and people will use their hand and to me uh, your hand is inappropriate because you've got calluses and the palms of your hand won't feel the heat. I always use the underside of my wrist. that will give you a much better evaluation of how hot the blade is getting. I'm going to remove her loop, the grooming loop here. Notice that I called it a loop. People call them nooses. Nooses are for hanging. We do not hang dogs, so we call them loops. The throat area, you have to be especially careful that we don't get too close in there. And there's a lot of cow licks, the way the hair grows, so it's important to follow it around. But again, I want to make sure the stop is nice and clean. And we'll just get over top of her eye. I'm not going to shave the entire top knot, her skull, because the cocker is supposed to have a domed top skull. Now even though we're doing a pet trim, we still want to follow breed profile and the dog's structure. And by doing the top skull appropriately, we're going to leave some hair. And what you can do is you can gauge it by the corner of the ear on each side. So we're going to leave a little crown in the front. And we'll just thinning shear that off after. You can go right down behind the ear so it's shorter in the shoulder area. And I've noticed that I'm following the pattern line of the growth of the hair so that I don't hit the cowlicks and get a bald spot. 